is the ear liner <clears throat> that when you saw in the side by side comparison of the unaltered ear liner to the uh, torn ear photo of the actual torn ear um, you can see what I've done here I took my heavy scissors right here after it was marked and I cut these sections out I then took a file and I filed the edges nice and flat uh, not flat I, I angled the edges so that they wouldn't be straight across they would come together in a more natural way so now I've got a nice uh, damaged ear as per the client's request. All right. Now the way I'm going to trim the ear to match is to first insert the altered ear liner which is going to be a little a little tricky because it's going to grab as it goes in. Besides the cuts it's also been textured using one of my Joe Combs uh, form scrapers and a narrow stout rougher to get under the ear liner here. But I need to work this in a little bit carefully. I need to work this in to get it exactly into position. He's pushing the ear liner up and pulling the ear skin down. Now I need to manipulate the skin into place and get the edges properly aligned on the ear liner. You try not to grab a hair. I'm grabbing the skin more than I'm I'm not I'm not trying to yank on the hair. I'm just grabbing hold of the skin and manipulating the skin as I go. So I do not want to pull any hair out if I can at all avoid it at all costs. I want to get this into position. And once I get this into position, I'm going to brush the hair pattern, make sure it's all laying down properly. Like so. Now. Get this, get this just right. Because the next step is to cut, uh, and I hate doing this, but this is what the client wants. His deer had a severely notched ear, and he wants that recreated on his animal. Um, that's what was one of the complaints before about the guy who mounted the deer the first time. Um, he said that he would preserve the uh, notches in the ear and he did nothing. Now what I'll do, I'm going to feel along where the notches are and I'm, and I'm going to compare them to the photo on his deer so that I know exactly where I'm at. Now the top one is right here. The secondary notch is here and that is where the hole is in the edge of the skin, right here. And how well you could see that, but it is right there. So, <clears throat> the way to approach this is um, pretty goddamn desperate in my book, but it's the way it's going to be. I need to feel, again, using my sense of feel. Where those gaps are. I'm going to push the scalpel blade through the skin cut straight out like so create this damage well, this goes into I need to go down with it I'm going to use the scalpel because it's sharp go straight down okay now there's the end of the damage for the ear liner. The top one, again, this goes a little further down. So I'm going to feel along here. Where the hell are you? There it is, right here. Here it is. I go down to where it begins. And it just so happens to be 
a little a dark stripe right here at the area where the cut is going to be located so I'm going to cut along that stripe got to go through the back and the front evenly I'm just going to lift up and out there now we've got that now <clears throat> what needs to be done at this point is some of this ear needs to be trimmed trimmed away uh, you see how this is this this tip over here looks okay but this one here needs to be taken taken out just a little more along the very very tip So to do that, I'm going to clamp it with a small hemostat. I'm going to clamp it onto the ear liner. Get it like so. To hold it in place. All right. Now, if you use a scissor, if you use a scissor to do this. You'll simply, you'll cut the hairs like crazy. You don't want to cut the hairs. Now go through with the scalpel and come up. And we're going to cut this piece away. There's actually a piece missing on that deer. And that's what I want to recreate here. Be most cautious that you don't cut your fingers open. <laughs> I'm telling that to myself, actually. <clears throat> there we go. It's just that little bit of skin and hair right there. And that's gone. Put the scalpel down. He must that off. Now brush this out. Like so. There's the ear liner there. So I'm going to bring this skin together here. Be sure this gets separated. Now what I might do, I might come along and cut some more of this away. Of the ear liner. Cut some of this ear liner away. Just a little more, just to separate the two pieces. Not a lot, just enough, there we are, <clears throat> to make a difference. Now we bring the front skin and the back skin of that together. We join it up. Okay. So now we have that right there to the photo. How well this is showing up here. But we've got that damage right there. Now there are there is other damage on this. There was other damage to this ear. You can see right here, this looks like a tooth mark actually from, from a fight. That looks like a, a, a bite mark that didn't go through. I'm not going to try and recreate that. That's that, that would be insane to try and do. I'm going to make sure that I pull the skin in order to create this wide gap here. I'm simply going to pull the skin down and fit it, fit it well. Okay, now there's the ear liner inside. Okay, I might go inward a bit on that. So I'm going to withdraw the ear liner. And trim a little bit away. Okay, I've done a little more trimming on the ear liner, taking this in a little more, and I took a little bit more off of here. Now I'm going to file the edges. I'll show you how that was done. Just going to go along, file the edges. I'm kind of beveling is what I'm beveling the edges is what I'm doing, so that they're not flat across. I want that injury to have a bevel edge so that the skin can come together. And that's all it takes. 
At this point, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and apply the hide paste, the, uh, the, the epoxy paste, to the ear liner and insert it into the ear. As you can see, the ear partially uh, inverted itself as the ear liner came out, and that's good. That'll give me a good starting point when I get the ear back in. I'll be able to start like so and work the ear liner into the ear skin. So, here goes. And right, what I've got is I've got the uh, epoxy paste and I heated the part A, this part here, heated it in my microwave 20 seconds on a medium high heat. Now I'm just going to go ahead and mix it together real well. On their videos they show them mixing it up on a um, in a, a clear plastic cup but I think that's for demonstration purposes. I've been mixing up stuff for a lot of years and I know about the looking for uh, mixing it until there are no striations and whatnot. And they say you can pre-color this with just about anything. Now it has a water cleanup which is nice. I kinda like that especially on this deer with the with these holes in the ears, these cuts. Water cleanup is going to be quite a blessing. Now I'm going to put in some red flocking. It's what I use in all my other pastes that I use for ear liners. Uh, I use it on my Pro One Premium paste. I've used it on my um, Polytranspar Epoxy Adhesive. I used it on, um, what else did I, I've gotten a couple of other things where, just to add some color, okay now this is going to take a little more than the clear um, epoxy adhesive uh, from Wasco, uh, Polytranspar. Unfortunately there's no more Wasco, so I'm going to add a lot more to this. You can tint it with um, powdered colors oil colors oh here we go here we go now now we're getting we're getting a nice a nice dark pink that's that's what I want and you have to play with this stuff sometimes to see what's to see exactly what's what the nice thing you've got several hours to work with this epo um, epoxy oh that's a nice that's a nice dark flesh tone I like that and because you mix it up thoroughly and you keep mi keep mixing it up thoroughly, uh, it shouldn't be inhibited by this. The only thing that will inhibit this, they say, is using acrylic. And it inhibits, inhibits its uh, uh, pourability in that it makes it like chewing gum, but it, it will still cure. It just makes it more difficult to work with. Um, I don't see that as a difficulty, uh, but that's just me. Okay, now I'm going to apply this to the ear liner, which has been textured and whatnot. It, it's adhering real nice to the ear liner. It's adhering real, real well to the ear liner. I'm pleased with the way it's holding, holding on. Uh, some of the hide pastes I've used, including the Pro One, tends to kind of get rubbed off. I don't know if it's because it's the soft softness of the plastic that does it I don't know I don't know but uh, this is this is holding on every which way I put it look at that that's pretty that's wicked cool right there if this works well on this ear these ears for this deer you have to make sure you get it under the overhang here you want to get paste up in there for sure now if you have trouble using a craft stick like this, you can also go with a disposable acid brush. I have those. You can maneuver it around with a brush. You could even dip the brush in a little warm water if need be. Just get this everywhere. Get the paste everywhere. This is AV's epoxy paste. I, you know, we all use AV's epoxy sculpt, epoxy clay.
Dave Rommel up there makes a great product. And he makes some great cheese too, so. This is the way I would usually put the uh, hide, all the other hide paste and other adhesives on. This is really staying where I put it. That's what I like. Okay, I'm going to continue to apply this to the ear liner, and then I'll be putting it in the ear skin proper. Okay, here we go. Yeah. The nice thing about it being clean up with water, if it gets in the hair, I'll wash it off with some soap and water. Okay. Let's get this through. Come on, baby, get through all the way. Come on, Larry, go all the way. There we go. Well, it's showing through a nice dark flesh color, flesh tone color, not necessarily dark, but a good flesh tone color. And I'm able to taxi the derma, manipulate the skin, move the skin where I want it into position on this ear liner. Right, time for the gloves to come off. It's like my, the plastic gloves are slipping on the hair. <sighs> Let's take one off for now. There we go. Now I'm able to Feel the skin and move it about. Now I can feel the skin and I move it all about. That's what it's all about. Yes, sir. Okay. Going good here. All the gloves come off. All right. Press the skin down on the inside here, down into the ear channel. Make sure this gets underneath the overhang flange, the upper flange of the ear. I want to get it into position. I want to brush the hair patterns into place. I know it's not set yet. No, no, no. Not at all. Because I need to manipulate the skin into position around these openings. I'm going to get a tip up here. I'm going to get this offside piece here. Okay, now there it has leaked out a little bit, so I'm just going to take a uh, I'm just going to take a a uh, craft stick here. I take a craft stick here and simply run that off the hair like so. Alright, I'm going to take a wet cloth, I think. I don't know what a little piece of cloth, a little cloth. Just going to use a little bit of water on the cloth. Wiped up. Oh, it does wipe right off. Look, oh my gosh, look at that. That's nice. Okay. That's what's nice about using the water based. That's what I like about the Pro One hide paste. It, it's water based as well. You can wipe it clean off the hair. Okay, now here is this damaged area. Let me get this in right. Now we got a lot of it in the hair here. We'll clean that off. cleaned off here oh there we go nice 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 okay there we go and here's the result uh, it was a little more complex than I had originally thought mostly of just keeping the um, getting the um, epoxy paste out of the hair but, uh, and then it was a little more trimming away with my small iris scissors of some skin. And I actually started trimming away some hair because the hair was just 
laying across the opening. And I don't want, the one thing he wanted was to be sure that the injury would show. So I'm going to do a little more adjusting, try to get this raised up a little more. I'm not going to cut any skin away. I don't think I'll bring any skin away. I haven't decided yet, but this is where it stands right now from the front against the actual the photo of the actual deer's ear. Here it is from behind. It's got quite a bit of injuries there. You can see right through. It looks nice. The uh, adhesive said the um, epoxy paste seems to be doing a fabulous job holding it all holding it down really is doing a wonderful job holding it down uh, it's holding it against the upper flange where it curves over it's tight against the, uh, the skin is tight against the ear liner there so I'm going to do a little more farting around with this little part right here to try and get this a little wider and uh, then I'm going to leave it set uh, I'm going to card the edge of the ears so that they stay flat in place and don't shift while the stuff is setting. Now, this should set up in a, about an hour or two, so I'll be back to it then. Alrighty, final adjustments have been done. I did trim away a little bit of skin here. Um, and I was using uh, isopropyl alcohol to get the, um, epo uh, the epoxy paste out of the hair. And I remembered I did have a uh, little bottle of the AV Super Solvent. Safety solvent, rather. And I put it on some paper towel, and that got it out of the hair even more efficiently than regular isopropyl alcohol. Um, it is holding the skin down incredibly well. And I think, I believe it's beginning to set because it's getting a little warm. Uh, let's say it's a two-part situation, and it will warm as it's setting... That's why it's a good, another good thing that this is a tanned cape. <laughs> it's just a little bit of warmth. Almost feels alive. Actually, there's not much warmth in most animals' ears. Uh, it's holding everywhere. Uh, of course, when you, when you find an air bubble, simply work it down a little bit to the opening at the base. You can also, I also put a little bit of alcohol on this modeling tool, this Jonas modeling tool, and just kind of worked it down a little bit. Uh, it helps accentuate the ridges in the ear um, and helps press it tight, the ear skin tight against the ear liner, um, which is an important, an important thing to do. You want to keep tight contact against the ear liner as it's setting. Um, I was going to try and knock out two ears at one time. It's better off to work one ear at a time. So you can concentrate fully on the placement of the skin and make sure it lays down the way it's supposed to. For me, anyway, I'll work on one ear at a time. But uh, I think I really do like this stuff. It's nifty. It's swell. I don't get much older than that in my phraseology. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of pleased with it. In fact, I'm very pleased with it. It's allowing some of the color to show through. Not as much as the Pro One Premium Paste, as an example, but about the same as the... Uh, smooth Out is what I used before, as well as the Poly Transpar Epoxy Putty, Epoxy Adhesive. Sorry, polytransparent epoxy adhesive. That's nice in that it is a sort of a almost nearly clear product, so when you add color to it, the color really shows through. Now, the Pro One Premium Hide Paste is nice because that's white, and it, it colors up pink. And this pink color really shows through the pale skin of a deer's ear very, very well. But uh, this, is, this is beginning to kick, I think. I dare say, because when I push it against the ear liner, it's not pulling away. It holds precisely where I want it to be. And that's the 
that's what you want from any hide paste. Um, but yeah, I was just going to clip the edges and just let it set, but I worked it a little more, and I'm glad I did. I think I got a much, a much uh, better damaged area. So, I'm pleased with this. I'm going to let it set. Very pleased with the end result.